Good evening, everybody. I hope you've had a productive day. I'm excited about this word that the Lord has given me uh, regarding our choices that we have in the midst of this um, uh, pandemic. We have been, of course, uh, quarantine, quarantine, excuse me, temporarily, but it gives us a wonderful opportunity um, to grow. Um, I haven't been using these terminologies, but everything's been tied together. And um, um, this, this, is a, this is a season um, where we are called to spiritual formation. Um, uh, your spiritual formation or your growth, um, your spiritual growth, becoming um, uh, like Christ, um, it counters and it conquers um, the sinful powers of this world. Um, as your inner self is transformed, um, it changes how you approach and how you address the world around you. And so um, I, I was talking with you uh, a few weeks before uh, about how I believe that um, the persons who have been preparing themselves um, during this period of pandemic are the ones who are going to be ready um, to um, to worship God, to represent God, um, and they're just going to overall be better. Um, they're not going to come out of um, this time of crisis um, talking about uh, how bad things are. They're going to come out, um, and they're going to be able to see that in themselves they have become a better person. Um, as a result um, of this uh, season. So um, I want to talk a little bit again about um, spiritual formation and, and understanding how, um, regardless of the circumstances that we're in, uh, if you have life, God has given you a choice. Um, if you want to shape it and form it and say, hey, um, God has chosen me for this time, understand that those whom God has chosen, he has also given them a choice. We referenced uh, last week how the Bible tells us that, um, that life and death, blessing and cursing are set before us. And then the admonition is that we would choose life so that we might live. Uh, we talked uh, last week about choosing um, God's love as a means of spiritual formation. Um, of growing um, spiritually, knowing that God loves you. Um, but uh, today, and forgive the, the glare in my glasses, but I need it. Um, we want to talk about the, the choice to choose not only God's love, but also to choose God's forgiveness. All right? This is critically important. You are not going to grow uh, in the midst of this crisis without uh, choosing to accept the forgiveness of God, all right? Why do we have to choose the forgiveness of God? Because um, it sets us free uh, from the guilt and the regret from choices that you and I have made in the past, all right? And you know we made some. Um, a part of this uh, uh, time where we're sitting down, uh, many of us alone, um, just in silence, you know, you have a lot of time to yourself. Um, you can't think about yourself and not acknowledge uh, your own sin, all right? Um, how did I get here? We know that some of it is circumstantial, and we know that some of it is because of choices we have made. And again, I'm saying to you that we got to be um, clear about the need for us to accept the forgiveness of God, because without it, we're always going to be um, laden with the guilt and the regret of the choices that we have made in the past. All right. Choosing God's forgiveness is how we experience the love of God. Uh, amen. You cannot experience God's love without experiencing God's forgiveness. In fact, let me say it another way, when you experience 
or when you choose, excuse me, to uh, uh, to accept God's forgiveness, it enables you to experience the love of God. Uh, if you if you're writing anything down while I'm talking, I pray you are. In uh, Micah chapter uh, seven and verse eighteen, it's a powerful verse. It says, "Where is another God like you, who pardons the guilt of the remnant?" overlooking the sins of his special people. You will not stay angry with your people forever because you delight in showing unfailing love. Amen. In Psalm 103, verse number 12, is another, another powerful scripture where it says, speaking of God, that he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Listen, God is a forgiving God. Amen. Um, I, I just I, I, I just believe that some of us are going to come out of this season knowing that we can start over. Let me say that again. That we're going to come out of this season knowing that we can start over. Because while we were in this season, we, we were able to finally uh, choose to accept the forgiveness of God. It's hard for people to accept, um, it's hard, excuse me, it's hard for people to forgive themselves, uh, let alone uh, accept the forgiveness of God. People will pray and ask God to forgive them, but they won't feel as if God has forgiven them. They won't accept it. And they'll walk around with the guilt and it stifles your spiritual formation. It, it hinders your spiritual growth. You can't get past the fact that you said something or did something um, in the past and um, and you feel as if what you said or what you did has in some way disqualified you and it will keep you from becoming all that God has wanted you to be. It has killed your spiritual formation. Uh, but when you accept the forgiveness of God, the opposite happens. You understand that I can get past this. Um, and that all that God has planned and purposed for me, um, it is mine still, amen. And I can pursue it even as I come through this season. I hate sounding redundant, but coming through this season of pandemic, amen, uh, that we're going to come through this pursuing again the thing that God has purposed us for. Why? Because we understand the mistakes we have made. We are praying and ask God for forgiveness. We have chosen to accept uh, God's forgiveness. It has exposed us to the fact that God, amen, is full of love for us. And he wants to show us his love. It is un it's an unfailing and everlasting love. And I'm telling you, all with the love of God, amen, it makes you a powerful person. It enables you to go after those things um, that God has called you to. All right? Listen. Understand uh, that God has the power to forgive you of your sin. Let me say that again. God has the power to forgive you of your sin. All right? Uh, a, a passage of scripture that comes to mind, um, it's, in, it's in a couple of places, but in Matthew's gospel, it's recorded in Matthew chapter 9. It's the first eight verses. Uh, and uh, it says, it talks about um, those four men who brought their friend to Christ who was paralyzed. And, and Jesus saw their faith and he turns to the paralyzed man and says to him, your sins are forgiven. And you know the whole story where uh, there were some uh, scribes and Pharisees who were present who felt like Jesus had spoken out of turn. Because they didn't believe that the Lord had the power to forgive sin. And, um, and not only did the Lord forgive the man of his sin, but he also healed him of his paralysis. Um, because again, God has the power. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has the power to forgive sin. That's why you're going to have confidence in making this choice to receive God's forgiveness. Because God has the power to forgive you of your sin. All right? What does the Lord show us in the text? He shows us there in Matthew chapter 9, 
by forgiving the sins of a man who was physically paralyzed. He shows us that spiritual matters must be dealt with first. Number, number, number two, the text shows us that, that real, the real problem is not always the obvious one. Boy, I wish I had time to walk that dog. Let me try it one more time. Spiritual matters have got to be dealt with first. Right? That's why he heals, that's why he forgives the man before he heals him. And secondly, he helps us to understand that the real problem is not always the most obvious one. Amen. Um, that even though they could see that the man was paralyzed, his um, the need that needed to be addressed first was not the one that was on the surface, but it was the one that was in the soul. All right? Amen. What difference would it would have made if the Lord had healed the man and he still would have not had his sins forgiven? Think about that. Think about a man who has been healed physically, but spiritually is still depraved and still walking in unforgiveness. A lot of us don't want to address this. We, we want the latter instead of the former. Think about this now. Can I tell you that our great, greatest issue facing us in this hour is not coronavirus. It is the pro, it's, not, it's not the pandemic of coronavirus. It is the problem of human sin. And we don't want to talk about sin. This is sin. Talking about sin hadn't been popular in a long time. And I know it is unpopular still today. But I want to bring it up because there's no need to be forgiven if there's no sin. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Sin is behind the problems that we were facing uh, on this planet. Sin is behind the sickness in our bodies. Some of you are not going to admit that. You know, um, we don't want to admit this, that, that the fact that, uh, that sickness and disease has entered the world as a result of human sin. All right. And, and, and because sin is present, because sin is prevalent um, in the world, then repentance is needed. I want you to hear me. Amen. Forget about the world. Forget about our bodies. Think about our souls. Sin is behind the problem of our souls. Our souls are sometimes lacking spiritual formation and absent of any growth and development because of sin. I want you to hear me, all right? Listen, you can say what you want to. According to uh, Psalm 51 and 5, you and I are determined to sin. Oh, I don't hurt somebody's feelings. I know, I don't hurt your feelings. I said we are determined to sin, all right? Uh, because the heart, above all, it is full of sin. It is wicked. Left to our own devices, we are more prone to sin than not. Were it not for repentance, forgiveness of our sins, were it not for the power of the Holy Spirit, were it not for the salvation of our souls, were it not for us engaging in spiritual disciplines like prayer and study of the word, those kinds of things, and we didn't stay before the face of God, I'm telling you that more often than not, we would be determined to sin, all right? Um, we, we're determined to sin. We are uh, diseased sinners. Sometimes we sin because of the disease that is in the soul. There's, there is a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. Amen. And it's causing disease. Amen. There are a lot of people who are simply not settled with God. Amen. Uh, because of the the illumination and the attraction of the things of this world, um, you know, we're looking from one side to the other. We don't know um, what to do. Sometimes we are diseased. We are not at ease. All right, um, we are we are deceived sinners. We are deceived sinners. This is why it's important for us to humble ourselves and stay before the face of God and to seek the wisdom of God. We think we know. A lot, but we don't know that much. 
and it's easy for the enemy to, to uh, deceive us. I will even say um, that even in this season that we're going through, um, that we are being deceived to some extent. Amen. Um, whenever there's a crisis, there's corruption. Amen. There is deception. And again, I don't want to. I don't want to sound necessarily like you know, I'm some a conspiracy theorist. But I'm telling you, um, we ain't heard the truth yet. Um, we have, and, and I don't know if we'll ever hear it. Amen. Uh, Satan is a liar, and he's the father of lies. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's impossible for Satan to tell the truth. He's going to twist it. He's going to bend it. He's going to turn it. And and listen, and, and just, like, just like the Holy Spirit is craving to get in our ear, amen, to tell us the truth, Satan is also, amen, craving and clamoring to get in our ear for our attention so that he can deceive us. All who have sinned have been deceived. And, and, if, and if those sins are not forgiven, if we never repent of our sins, excuse me, we're going to die in our sins. Amen. The wages of sin is death. Amen. Without We're doomed to die. The wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says in Romans 6, 23. Amen. But we take uh, a refuge in the fact that the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. So there's a few things I want to share with you about this. As a matter of fact, um, in Romans uh, uh, chapter 8, um, and verses uh, 20 and 21, it's a very, very powerful scripture. Amen. Um, talked about how, you know, we are deceived, uh, diseased, um, um, tricked, as it were. The Bible says in um, Romans 8 and 20 and verse 21, it says that against its will, hmm? All creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. Amen. Some of you are saying, well, well Bishop, all this ain't my fault. Yeah, we were born into a world of sin. Amen. We were subjected to the curse of God. Amen. Against our own will. Amen. Uh, you might not have chosen to be born into a world uh, and, and into a context where as a, a living human being you were uh, 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 more determined and more predestined perhaps as it were um, to be a sinner uh, but you have a choice amen you don't have to accept the results of that context you and I can engage in the process of spiritual formation we can determine what our identity is going to be by our choice Amen. By choosing to accept the forgiveness of God. Amen. Understand what I'm saying. All right. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter two, verses one and three says we were dead. Once we were dead because of our disobedience and our many sins. The word says we used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Listen, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Does that make sense to you? Romans 5 and 12 says, that when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. And Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. All right, this is why, this is why God's forgiveness is so necessary and attractive. When we consider the scope of our sin, when we consider the nature of our sin, when we consider that we don't, because of our sins, stand any chance of being saved without the forgiveness of God, it makes forgiveness much more attractive to us. 
you're going to have to uh, turn here if, you, if you're walking with me through this. But in Exodus chapter 20, of course, you have the Ten Commandments. Amen. And there the Lord gave the instructions. And um, I'm like, Lord, have mercy. When you look at the Ten Commandments, certainly we can say uh, that uh, if we um, haven't broken all of them, we have broken many of them. Amen. But James 2 and 10 reminds us that the person who keeps all of the laws except one, even, even if we kept all of the law and, and, and transgress one, transgressing one is, makes a person as guilty as a person who has broken all 10. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you is that I don't care who we are, we all need God's forgiveness. It shapes our identity. Amen. It gives us an opportunity, again, to start over. And as I mentioned a moment ago, to pursue those things um, that God has called us to. I want to close this out. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, but remember this, that God's forgiveness is a fact. Number two, the forgiveness of God is far-reaching, both wide and deep. But most of all, God's forgiveness is his favor. It's, a, it's God's favor towards you and me. So if God's forgiveness is to become our identity, it must also be our choice. The Bible reminds us there in Acts chapter 16 uh, when Paul and Silas were in jail and the Lord supernaturally delivered them that the jailer inquired of Paul and said, what must we do to be saved? And in verse 31, Paul replied and said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. Listen. That's all it's about. It's about believing Christ. It's about accepting God's forgiveness for your life. Are you listening to me? I don't. I don't care. I don't care what you say about it, child of God. Um, uh, I, I don't. I don't want to come out of this like I went in and think that I went in some as in some special way that when all of this started couple of months ago that I was some special person. No, I humble myself and I understand that, that this may be a time and a season to slow me down. It's a time to reset. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a time to prepare to start over. Amen. Business as usual, that day is gone. We There's something more that God has always been calling us to, but he couldn't get our attention. It has taken this time for God to do it, to show us ourselves, to reveal to us our sins in the hope that we would ask the Lord for forgiveness so that we can start over. Amen. As the old saints would say, to run on a little while longer to see what the end is going to be. Listen to me. The Lord saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, he washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. Amen. He saved us because we were sinners. Are you listening to me? He didn't save us because we were perfect. He saved us because we were not. Amen. And as an act of his mercy, when, I, when our sins should have sentenced us to death, he washed them away. Glory to God. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Listen to me. Choose to accept God's gift of forgiveness for your life. It is critical to your spiritual formation. Are you hear what I'm saying? Don't walk around and boast 
and pretend as if you are better than you really are. Amen. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. But instead say, Lord, uh, I, d I deserve everything I've gotten. The recompense of my own error. And I'm sorry for whatever I may have done. And I'm asking for your forgiveness. And as you ask God, choose to accept it. Don't just ask him for it. Accept it. Amen. Believe that the Lord has forgiven you of your sins. And don't walk around with that guilt. That's what the devil wants to, you to do. Amen. That's what your haters want you to do. They don't want you to. They don't care anything about your progress. They don't care anything about you pursuing your, your purpose. Amen. They want to keep you in a place where you are walking around with guilt and regret, with your head hanging low, feeling sorry for yourself, wanting everybody else to feel sorry for you. No, no, don't make that choice. That is no way to live. Instead, choose to accept God's forgiveness. Believe, amen, amen, that when you do so, when you repent of your sins, the Lord will save you, amen. As an act of his mercy, he gives you this gift so that you can go on with the rest of your life. God bless you. God bless you. We thank you for giving us this time to share with you the word. Amen. And we pray that it has been a blessing to you. Amen. Uh, we're going to be talking a little more about this on, uh, I said Wednesdays, uh, but we're going to do something different on Wednesdays. Uh, you'll hear about it. Um, perhaps um, uh, in a little while, um, definitely by tomorrow, what we're going to do on Wednesdays. Um, but uh, we'll be back uh, certainly on Sunday and Mondays, amen, giving you this word, amen. We're going to talk about um, choosing Christ as Lord. In other words, get choosing to give the Lord control over your life, amen. Don't, don't come out of this crisis reckless, amen, and out of control. We're going to choose to give the Lord the, the control that the Lord should have had, amen. But it has taken a crisis of pandemic proportions to bring us to this place. We're going to come out of here, and this time Jesus is not just going to be our Savior, but he's going to be our Lord. God bless you. Come on, bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for our time together in your word. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of, of mercy that you extend to us in the form of forgiveness for, of our sins. I pray, God, that everyone listening to me will in this, their private spaces. We begin to acknowledge this sin, ask you for your forgiveness, and accept the same over their lives. I pray, God, that we will come out of this season free from the past. Hallelujah. Free to live our lives again according to your will and purpose. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we, we <clears throat> command the devil to take his hands off of the people of God. He has had them bound up long enough, bound up in guilt and regret. He's had them bound up feeling unqualified and, and feeling as if they didn't measure up. Uh, but we come against that in the name of the Lord Jesus. We take authority over the devil right now. According to your word, we are free. We are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. We will see you next time. God bless.